Let's continue chapter 30 with section 5 and talk about how the financial system can create money. So the financial system itself creates money and so we should we should really talk about money in terms of two different um, parts. So we talk about the total money supply, we'll divide it up into two sections. We can talk about outside money. Outside money or sometimes referred to as monetary base um, is the money that the Federal Reserve or the central um, the monetary authority creates and supplies to the financial system. The financial system then in turn takes that money and will use that to create what's called inside money or money that's created, liquidity that's created from within the financial system. So when we think about this money creation process it has to do with the fact that we have fractional reserve banking. So banks only have to keep a part of what's deposited at their bank. So if you deposit, say, $1,000 at your bank, your bank is only required to keep a fraction of that in reserve. All right? That fraction, the, the fraction that they can lend out, then can be relent, reused, and will actually go into creating more monetary assets. So let's take a look at this process. and Let's look at the first step. So the first step is the cr Fed creates this outside money. All right, we could say by simply printing currency, that's actually an oversimplification. Um, the Fed doesn't just print currency. In fact, most of um, the money supply has no physical existence whatsoever. It's a simply um, represented within a computer system. It's electronic. Um, but the Fed creates outside money. All right, so we have currency in circulation. We also have um, a, a few other things that we can we can put in there. We're not going to get into that real that that much detail for this class. Take money in banking if you want more, but creates this. Let's just for our purposes right now for simplicity. Think about this currency. All right, the person who holds this currency deposits it in the financial system, so they put it in the bank. All right. The bank then changes form. It goes from being a currency to being a bank deposit of some kind. Now, there's cur the currency still exists, so the bank is holding on to that currency. But for you, all right, who has just made the deposit, it's a checkable deposit. All right. Now, the second step in this process is that the bank lends a fraction of that deposit out. All right. So the amount of money now in circulation just expanded. So let's, well, I have a numerical example that'll make that a little bit clearer, just a slide or two. So the overall money supply becomes the initial deposit, so the initial increase in monetary base, or we, I like to call outside money, plus that new loan amount. And this loan is actually this inside money that we're talking about. This is money that's been created, a monetary asset that's been created by the financial system. So this amount of outside money that the Fed creates gets multiplied. There's a multiplier effect. So sometimes we talk about the money that the Fed creates and we call it high-powered money. The reason why we call it high-powered money is because it has this multiplier effect. Okay, so let me go ahead. I'm going to skip ahead of this just a little bit and show you my numerical example. So let's say we have the bank gets a initial deposit of a thousand of ten thousand dollars. Well, let's say the reserve ratio, all right, how much the bank is required, what fraction of that deposit the bank is required to hold on reserves is twenty percent. So what happens? The bank keeps two thousand dollars in reserve and makes a loan of $8,000. So what's the total um, in this first round? What's totally happened to the money supply? Well, it initially increased by 10000 because we, well, for want of a better word, we printed $10,000 and gave it to somebody. They put it in the bank. The bank lends it out and created an additional $8,000 because what happens is you still have your $10,000 in your checking account, the bank loans out $8,000, whoever borrows it goes and buys something, and then they deposit it back into a bank. Now it's important to note this isn't one single bank. This is the entire banking system, all right, it's the entire financial system. All right, that $8,000 then gets deposited by whoever receives it 
and it goes back and becomes a deposit. Well, that increases overall um, deposits available to be lent. The bank has to keep the banking system has to keep 20% of that, which is 1,600. So that means there's an additional 6,400 dollars that gets created. That then goes back into the banking system. It gets deposited, and it keeps 20%. Has that much left over? That gets deposited, and so on and so forth. Actually, this can go on forever. All right? It's it's actually what we call an infinite geometric series. If you're a math geek like me, you under you know what that means doesn't really matter. What matters is there's a shortcut to figuring out what this is and it turns out that the total increase in um, money supply will be fifty thousand dollars right because there's a multiplier effect. In this case the multiplier effect is five alright so initial ten thousand dollars yields an overall increase in the money supply of fifty thousand dollars. Why? because of this what we call multiple deposit creation mechanism and that's the fancy name for this process here of it being deposited in the bank, the bank making a loan, it coming back and being deposited in another bank, that make, make, bank making a loan, coming back, deposited in that bank and so on and so forth. So in this case we only increased this outside money or monetary base by ten thousand dollars and the financial system itself created an additional forty thousand dollars. So now let's go back. Yeah, I know I'm jumping all around on you. Let's go back though and let's take a look at the mathematics of this money multiplier. So the first thing we have to define is reserves. Reserves are the um, currency and deposits that a bank keeps on hand. All right, so we talk about this as total reserves. So what can count as a reserve? All right, cash on hand. So cash in their vault, we'll call that vault cash sometimes, um, and deposits at the Federal Reserve, at least in the U.S. That's what counts as um, reserves for a bank. So the total reserves are their total currency on hand plus their deposits at the Federal Reserve. Now the reserve ratio tells a bank how much reserves it has to hold on deposit with the Fed given their amount of deposits. So we don't just go to a bank and say, hey, you have to keep a million dollars on deposit with the Fed. We tell the bank you have to keep a fraction of your total deposits. right? And that fraction we call the reserve ratio. So you have to keep 5% on reserve. You have to keep 10% on reserve. And what that reserve ratio is actually is dependent upon the size of the bank. So bigger banks are actually given a smaller reserve ratio than smaller banks. Um, and that is, and I don't want to go into the details of how that's determined. We're just going to assume a simple percentage. So banks can keep more reserves than this. That's called excess reserves. We're going to ignore excess reserves for the purposes of this class, although if you're interested in how that affects the money multiplier and multiple deposit creation, take money in banking. So the reserve ratio equals required reserve ratio plus excess reserve ratio. So we can split this out. Reserve ratio is the ratio of reserves to deposits that the bank keeps. The bank keeps some that are required, some that are excess. The required reserve ratio tells us how much they're legally required to keep on deposit at the Fed. Excess reserve ratio says how much they want to keep on hand for doing business. Um, note required reserves cannot be used for business. They are deposited at the Fed, and banks can't touch them. So, if we want to calculate this simple multiplier, a simple multiplier model, we can see that well, the multiplier is simply one over the reserve ratio. All right, simple money multiplier is a measure of the amount of money ultimately created per dollar deposited in the banking system. Um, now. This simple money multiplier, there's a problem with it. It doesn't handle, it doesn't account for the fact that that the general public, right, non-bank, you know, people actually hold currency too. So here we're assuming a zero um, currency ratio or zero currency being held by the public. Well, that's obviously kind of silly, but for right now it'll do. Um, so th this basically what the money multiplier does is it gives us a formula. It says, okay, money multiplier times 
whatever the change in the money base, all right, this outside money that the Fed creates, all right, money multiplier times that change in monetary base equals the change in the overall money supply. Now, this is really important because if we're going to conduct monetary policy, we want to actually know what happens to the money supply. So, the Fed has really tight control over monetary base, but not so much over the overall money supply. So it really kind of needs to have an idea of what this money multiplier is so we can see how the tool that it has access to affects, well, the macroeconomic variable it really wants to, um, to control. All right, generally speaking, the higher the reserve ratio, the smaller the money multiplier. The less the reserve ratio, um, the um, the smaller the reserve ratio, the bigger the money multiplier. Why is that? Well, we saw that in our numerical example that if the bank has to hold less reserves, it can lend out more and that kicks more back into the system. And so the smaller the reserve ratio, the bigger the money multiplier, the bigger the impact of a change in monetary base is going to have. So, if we want to determine how many demand deposits are going to be created, we calculate the reserve ratio. So, if the original deposit is $100, the reserve ratio is 10%. We take 1 over 0.1. Notice we have to do that as a decimal so that we end up with a reserve um, or a um, money multiplier of what? Of 10. So, 1 over 0.1 is 10, so 100 times 10 equals 1,000. So if we have a $100 increase in deposits, then that will ultimately lead to a $1,000 total increase in the money supply. Okay. So we saw this numerical example. This goes into, this is just a, a, a numerical example of this multiple deposit creation mechanism that allows the financial system itself to create money. And we've seen that this, this, the original impulse, the amount of money that got, extra money that got printed was only $10,000. But the financial system was able to use that outside money to create an additional $40,000. So what do we do when people hold currency? Well, if you take money in banking, I'm going to show you how to get this formula. But for right now, what I want to do is I just want you to see the formula. So if we want to be a little more complicated, we say it's 1 plus C, where C is well, the currency ratio, or the ratio of currency to total deposits. All right, why do we do it that way? Don't worry about it. Um, take the next class. I'll show you how the math works. But um, for now, just remember that formula, that we add this currency ratio in as well.